An enemy since 1979, now Iran and the U.S. and five world powers have a deal. So will it prevent Iran from getting nuclear weapons? The U.S. and five other nations struck the deal with Iran overnight, offering Iran relief from economic sanctions in exchange for limits on nuclear production. But questions over compliance and verification, along with Iran's history of provoking instability in the Middle East, are planting seeds of doubt in high places. Diplomats say the deal will cut off Iran's path to the nuclear bomb, even though many critics this morning are questioning that. President Obama, speaking just under two hours ago, saying the agreement is not, he says, built on trust, but he claims the ability to verify that Iran is indeed keeping its word. Today, because America negotiated from a position of strength and principle, we have stopped the spread of nuclear weapons in this region. Because of this deal, the international community will be able to verify that the Islamic Republic of Iran will not develop a nuclear weapon. Well, the deal does cut the number of centrifuges Iran can possess and subjects major facilities to international inspections. But there are some limitations to that. Iran must disable two-thirds of its centrifuge machines. Sanctions will snap back within 65 days with the non-compliance. So that's uh, easier said than done, critics say. The U.N. weapons embargo will remain in place for five years. The U.N. missile sanctions will remain in place for eight years. And U.N. inspectors could press for visits to military sites. Now, that last point is very, very key. Listen to what the president said about the verification of Iran's compliance just moments ago. Inspectors will have 24-7 access to Iran's key nuclear facilities. Iran will have access to Iran's entire nuclear supply chain, its uranium mines and mills, its conversion facility, and its centrifuge manufacturing and storage facilities. Notice that the president did not include military facilities in that statement. Under the deal, U.N. inspectors would be allowed to, quote, press for visits to Iranian military sites, but that doesn't mean that access would necessarily be granted and it could be delayed indefinitely. There are other problems with this deal. The fact that the missile sanctions will be lifted after eight years is something that the president's key military advisors cautioned against in congressional testimony just last week. Listen on. Under no circumstances should we relieve pressure on Iran relative to ballistic missile uh, capabilities and arms trafficking. I and ICBM stands for intercontinental, uh, which means having a capability to fly from uh, Iran to the United States, and we don't want that. Uh, so that's why we oppose ICBMs. First the deal, now the sell. With today's historic agreement to curb Iran's nuclear program, the Obama White House tonight is trying to convince nervous Mideast neighbors and the American Congress that there was no better alternative. The agreement we've reached, fully implemented, will bring insight and accountability to Iran's nuclear program, not for a small number of years, but for the lifetime of that program. I think this is such a bad deal, it'd be hard to muster 20 votes. I'm confident uh, that people will not choose to turn their back on the rest of the international community, on, on this opportunity to change a relationship, and this opportunity, which is the only viable alternative, to be able to guarantee there is a peaceful nuclear program and that they will not succeed or choose to get a weapon. It's what the president has done. He's taken the world's most destabilizing power, one of our chief antagonists, a country that's killed hundreds of Americans in Iraq, and he's guaranteed that they're going to become a nuclear nation. Instead of dismantling their program, this program, this deal locks in their nuclear program. This is the good deal that we have sought. So how do you justify down the road uh, taking off the arms embargo on conventional weapons and ballistic missiles. The United States doesn't lose anything, Andrea, by giving them the opportunity to prove this is a peaceful program. Death to America, death to Great Britain, death to Israel, death to the hypocrites. The hypocrites meaning the MEK and Pine.
Iran's supreme leader says his country's newly brokered nuclear deal will not change Iran's stance toward the U.S. During a speech marking the end of Ramadan, Ayatollah Khamenei said the nuclear deal must go through a legal process before being approved, and he asked that Iranian officials put national interests first. The supreme leader declared that Iran will continue to support Syria and its other allies, whether the deal is approved or not. Our policies will not change vis-a-vis -vis the arrogant government of the United States at all. Khamenei's remarks were greeted by chants of death to America. As Iran's supreme leader, he has the final word on all policy matters, foreign and domestic, including that nuclear deal. Four days ago, the president of Iran was in a rally where people were burning American and Israeli flags, chanting death to America and death to Israel. That wasn't 40 years ago. It wasn't four years ago. It was four days ago. So Iran has no incentive to change. And you've just made a terrorist regime much richer today. And you're going to allow them, after a decade, to have a huge enrichment infrastructure to make many nuclear bombs. This is a disaster.